Good morning, guys and gals, and welcome to another enthralling episode of Murel's Karaoke Hour. No, I'm kidding. We're playing RimWorld today here on Gaming with Murel, a neat little space-based survival game, base builder, uh, put forth by Ludeon Studios, uh, currently available on RimWorldGame.com. It's been greenlit on Steam, uh, but not up yet. The uh, studio says that they don't want to put it up on Steam till it's ready. So uh, if you like it, check it out on the website. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to start a new colony. Uh, this is the AI Storyteller. This is essentially our Dungeon Master. We have three to choose from. Cassandra Classic is essentially the all-round. Uh, no threat is too... I don't want to say too great because you can be run over, but they're reasonable. It makes sense you're not getting overrun by like 25 pirates on your first day. Uh, Phoebe Base Builder here is more for a peaceful, just focusing on building, and Randy Randoms for if you hate yourself. No rhyme, nor reason. So we will stick with Cassandra, and we're going to leave it on challenge. That's essentially normal. And we're going to get at it. Let's start here. And uh, as you can see, I like making new maps. And we're going to select our landing site. Essentially, this is where our ship will land. Um, let's find a nice uh, large hills. Doesn't get too cold. This is all the information on your site. Uh, just kind of like you pick indoor fortress. And uh, let's get going here. Next is going to be the character creation. And this is a bit of a pain. Um, because you can't just select, like, oh, I want someone with a ton of research, I want someone with a ton of growing. Uh, you have to randomize them. So what I'm going to do here, I'll uh, find a half-decent guy here, incapable of scary. We want someone incapable of none. Uh, Iron will, this guy's wonderful, 12 mining, he's just going to completely melt through, like, literally all the rock. And uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get the next two going, because it can take a while, and I will meet you at the crash site. Welcome back. Here we are at the crash site. The three of our survivors wake in their crypt asleep sarcophagi after crashing to the earth. And uh, what we're going to do, we're just going to let them crash. And uh, once they do, we're going to equip them with weapons that are going to fall out of the crypto sleep sarcophagi. Oh. Should have waited for the third guy to come out. Come on. There. I was going to say, if we lose someone on first day just because their Sarkov guy didn't wake up, I'd be so sad. Especially because that's the person with the hunting rifle. There we go. So what I did there, just click on the person to select them. You see it pops up down here. Right click on what you want to focus on. You know, we can tell them to haul things once they're unforbidden. I just told them to equip the weapons. What we're going to do now, we're just going to select these by doing a right click, or a left click square, and uh, hitting F to unforbid them. These are just remnants from our spaceship that have fallen to Earth, and we're going to use them to build our base. We have um, a bit of metal, some MREs, prepackaged meals. Uh, and just some important stuff starting out. We got a little bit of wood down here that's going to be useful. And uh, once we're done <clears throat> unforbidding this stuff, I'm going to take a look at the lay of the land. Uh, looks like I got it all. We'll pick up the rest of it. Uh, here we go. There's some stuff over here. Various. We'll unforbid that. Um, we got some muffalo over here. That's good. That's good eating right there. Oh, Muffalo down here, too. This is close to a steam vent. Look far away. That has to be researched now. There's some Cryptosleep sarcophagi over here. They're like ancient uh, sarcophagi. And I made the mistake of opening one on my first day because I was like, oh, maybe there's friendly people in there. Maybe there's supplies in there. And there was like a dude with a grenade launcher and somebody with like a long range sniper rifle. And I had no defenses or anything, and uh, that was probably my shortest RimWorld playthrough. I think that clocked out at uh, five minutes or something. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to set up down here. I like the look of it. It's close to Muffalo, which means it's close to food. So we're going to get started on some of the important things here. <clears throat> uh, first things first, let's set up a stockpile. And that's just where they're going to haul everything that we just told them was okay for them to touch all the uh, prepackaged meals and the silver and everything. And uh, there's actually quite a lot of MREs, so we should be able to last a little bit. Not a ton of time, but a little bit. And what we're going to do, we're just going to mine right into here. And what I like to do, I won't annoy the muffalo. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll place some wind turbines over here to create electricity. So there we go, we have some mining work to do. Uh, there was a bit of metal, so I'm also going to tell them to start working on our uh, structure. Is the difference? Yeah, it's only one difference. So let's do this. Oh, uh, what I'm doing here, this is the right-click menu. I should have said that initially. Uh, this is essentially where you go in, all your building and everything. Uh, just right-click over here is all the important things. It's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, temperature that adds temperature things. Miscellaneous has a couple like the comms console and the trade beacon. Uh, those are going to be important once we start trading. Power is where we're going to get our wind turbines. That'll create electricity and so forth. Let's go back into structure. I forgot to put a door in. I always do that too. So a steel door, we'll just slap it right here. There. And now we are ready to watch our new best little friends get to work. Um, I should probably finish making this wall, though. And the difference between the steel wall and the steel conduit wall is one has uh, a wire running through it, so you don't have to run any additional wires which is helpful. I <clears throat> the difference between the two is literally just one one steel. So, uh I mean, if you're hard up, go for the regular one, but I personally will pretty much always go for the conduit wall. And uh once we get some electricity up and running, I'm going to start hunting. Um I should probably send someone with a pistol to hunt though. Oh, who knows? Who knows? I uh, sent, last time I played, I sent someone down with a Lee Enfield to kill a muffalo, and I just kind of stopped paying attention. I told him, just like, shoot this one, and he just walked to this one spot and just started taking pot shots, and he ended up killing like four of them, just because they kept getting in the way. Also, look out, your survivors will shoot other survivors. You know, just accidentally, it'll be like a firefight, and they'll get in the way of a bullet. It's tragic. And I am going to apologize right now. I am drinking my morning coffee. It is like 10 o'clock in the morning. I tried to record this yesterday and got sidetracked. Um, myself and uh, Blade666 over on Red Hot Gamers, uh, we're practicing our Rise of Nations. We're going to have a fun little uh, versus match up on the... Red Hawk Gamers Network here shortly. Um, also, I feel like I should plug him at the moment since I'm not really doing anything. If you're into Elite Dangerous, he's got quite a few videos up now, I believe, or at least he's working on quite a few, so check that out. Now, Jetty's mining. Okay, Taya, it looks like, is either building. Yeah, no, she's building. They're not going to haul that down until there's no jobs for the hauler to do. And actually, let's take a quick look at the overview page. This is what we're going to focus on here. I like to leave it on manual priority. Uh, you don't have to, but this will let us kind of micromanage a little further. Everyone has hauling. Taya is... A huge miner 12 so that should be like her <clears throat> I'm gonna put number two uh, but it just has to be higher than four as well 
Jenny should be more focused on these sort of things. So with any luck, that will... I didn't really explain that very well over here. Uh, this is essentially all the jobs they can do, all that they are allowed to do. Just click the boxes and manual priorities to raise it. Uh, factions, these are the other people in the immediate area. This is a map of our pretty little world. History, this is just going to kind of show how we're doing in terms of wealth total, wealth items, wealth buildings, and then just some statistics. We'll take a look at that a little more in depth once we're more than just kind of living in a cave. Now, we have quite a bit of battle, it looks like, in the surrounding area. Some gold over here, it looks like. Gold and silver are pretty much just uh, trade commodities that we'll be using. Um, I... I'm trying to wear this properly, but when I set up a defensive stratagem, if you will, I personally prefer to do pillboxes. I kind of have like this... I choose large mail or large hills because I like having the option to uh, do both inside and outside things so I can kind of have like multiple redundancies with tactical fallbacks and automated defenses. I've seen people, they prefer to do it all inside and like your defenses are all in what they call a kill room and it's just a room with like a ton of turrets. I don't personally prefer to do it that way. And uh, truth be told, as soon as we get power up and running, that's when I'm going to set up the defense grid. Uh, because defenses are just so important, and especially Cassandra Classic. Because I think a lot of people look at it and they're like, oh, well, you know, it's not like I'm going to be overrun by pirates all the time. I can put off my defenses. And that's, in my opinion, a mistake, because you're opening up just so many potential issues for your settlers. And settlers are going to be really hard to come by, which is how I got from gold and silver as a trade commodity to defense, because there's two ways you can really recruit people to your cause, which is to build a spaceship and escape Rimworld, by the way. Um, and one of them is capturing hostile combatants, which can also just include other people who have come to visit your town. You can just arrest them and force them to join you eventually, or you can purchase slaves from slave traders. Uh, my defenses, there doesn't tend to be survivors, uh, just the way I have it set up, so we will be relying not heavily. Uh, once we get defenses, we'll probably start kidnapping as well, but a lot of slave trading. Now, uh, you can also sell slaves, but it makes everyone super sad, so I wouldn't suggest doing it. And we're just going to put a couple wind turbines up here. Like so. And then once they're built, we'll start running uh, power conduits into our little fortress here. I'd say for your first day, what you really want to focus on is getting this indoor place set up, this little shelter, and uh, getting the bare necessities. I like to get electricity as soon as possible, just because that... It really is a necessity. I mean, you could argue it, you can live without electricity for a couple days, but it's going to inhibit food production, it's going to inhibit all sorts of things, so I like to get it up and running right off the bat. As well, you can see I put four beds in there. Um, that's where our settlers are going to sleep. There's going to be a bit of a kind of like... Uh, I don't want to say a negative moodlet, if you will, if you're familiar with The Sims, uh, because they're all sharing a room. But because none of the beds are touching the walls, you really want to keep all your beds at least one block away from the walls. 
It's going to give them the spacious interior perk. It's like a plus five. So that'll help offset it a little bit. And uh, truth be told, once that's all set up, we'll probably start working on getting a cook stove in place, a uh, butcher's table in place. We'll get some muffalo hunted. Um, I see that there's a boar in there that I was not intending to trap in there. He may become lunch, he may become a mascot, I'm not sure yet. Pickly 3. Now I can't kill him, I named him. And Tanya, Taya is plugging away at that. Where is everybody else? I don't have... Are they hauling, maybe? Yeah, it looks like they're hauling, so I'm going to let them continue doing that. And uh, while we do, I think I'll kind of give you an overview of how we're going to kind of expand. Um, we're going to, first of all, build a lot in here. Things that I don't necessarily want uh, kind of access to for everybody. Uh, we'll have, like, the comms console in here. We'll have research. We'll have... Uh, quite a bit in here in terms of, like, a medical ward, a jail probably somewhere in here. We'll have hydroponics down in this area, nice big setup there to uh, grow our food inside. And outside, I like to do kind of just stone walls around it. And what I may do is just stone wall this leave an opening here with our pillboxes and defenses up along this area. And then have sort of an area where we're building the ship, because I probably will try and escape since we're doing a series for everyone to enjoy. And then I'll also probably build like an apartment block, just because it's easier to expand buildings on the outside than on the inside. And uh, another thing I'm probably going to do here is, as soon as we get rudimentary defenses up, um, like one or two pillboxes, that is when I will go, because we do have... I do believe I saw some crypto sarcophagi over here. Yeah, once we have some basic defenses in place, I'm going to go open those. Um, they may be friendly. They may be hostile, so I'd rather have the defenses in place before opening that. But I assure you, I will be opening that, because I, deep down, I hope they're friendly. Oh, Mizder just created a single bed for himself, and then went to sleep. What a douchebag. The douche is strong in him. Man. So what we're going to do here, they have how many... Didn't I set up a third one? Okay, so wind turbines are actually something that was added just in the last update. Uh, before that, you really had to rely either on solar power or uh, geothermal energy through a steam vent. Now, you can still use geothermal energy. It's a great, reliable electricity source. Um, however, it's now something you have to research, so you can't get it right off the bat, which is a little disappointing to me, but I've moved on. I've moved on. I uh, Originally, I wanted to put this up like a month and a half ago for you guys, and uh, unfortunately, Fraps does not like RimWorld. That's the long and the short of it. So this is, uh, this build was released on the 15th, so about a week ago. Okay, why aren't you letting me... I've been playing too much Prison Architect, I was trying to right-click to cancel all that, and it wasn't letting me. So anyway, we have, uh... I believe Ms. Eider is going to run and start working on this. Taya, with her level 12 mining, is going to pick away. There's some metal here. Also some metal down this way. 
uh, what I've done, little steel conduit wall there to keep people from freely coming in through our back way here. Uh, gonna run some power cables down, and up into here is gonna be a nice battery bank, so where we can kind of store extra energy when we're not using it. And that'll hopefully give us a bit of a leg up. In all reality, I'll probably have another battery bank down here, just a tiny, tiny one. Oh, and I just dropped my keyboard. And uh, outside, each pillbox is going to be centered around a battery bank as well. That way, all of our defenses are sort of independent. They'll draw energy as long as there's a connection, but the battery will be there. In case, you know, you accidentally wake up two guys with rocket launchers in a crypto sleep pod, because the collateral damage on those is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. You will lose just so many things. In addition, uh, turrets explode, and when they explode, they take out a three block radius. So, we really. <clears throat> we really need several fail-safes once the more advanced pirates start coming in. And uh, the pig, it appears, has escaped, and I think Ms. Eider's going to make that wall right now. So unfortunately, we're not going to have a mascot, and he's been completely separated by his herd. It's pretty sad, actually. Another neat thing is the game uh, auto-saves five times a day. So, any of your autosaves will be within the last day or so. I have no intention of taking advantage of that. I want to show you guys a natural, organic run-through. If I die, I die. But, you know, that's something, if you're playing on your own, take advantage of it all the time. It's a great little feature. Especially when you're learning. I find games like this, like Dwarf Fortress, Prison Architect, um... You really have to be careful, because any small mistake could be just a game-ending mistake. And uh, actually, I'm taking a quick look here, and I have gone way over my time. We're at like 22 minutes, so I'm quickly going to do a couple plugs. Uh, if you like the video, first of all, subscribe, like, hit me up on Twitter, at Gaming with Murel. Uh, like most first episodes, premieres, I'm going to be uploading another one today. And then there's going to be regular updates Monday, for sure, and uh, either Monday or Monday and Friday. I'm not sure if I'm going to do another series for Friday uploads. Uh, who knows? And uh, also check out the Red Hot Gamers website and the Red Hot Gamers uh, channel. I'm going to link that down in the descriptions. And thanks again for watching. You guys make this happen, and I will see you in the next episode.